Hey guys, I know probiotics are a very controversial and extremely complex topic. And I'm not saying that what I'm going to present here will work for everyone all the time, even though it's based on scientific studies. But I rather want you to understand how things work so that you can optimize your life and your diet based on your own knowledge. Okay, let's start off by clarifying why you should care about inflammation. So generally speaking, inflammation is not bad. Inflammation protects you from dying, for instance, when you get a cut or when you get an infection. That's when you want to have inflammation. That's when you, when you want to have acute inflammation. However, inflammation can become bad when it persists and when it becomes chronic. And by now we know that chronic inflammation can lead to all kinds of diseases, ranging from heart diseases to diabetes to Alzheimer's. It can even affect your mood and obviously also to a lot of inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. So preventing chronic inflammation and keeping your inflammation levels low whenever you don't have an actual infection is a very worthwhile attempt for your health. And also keeping inflammation levels low while you don't have an infection uh, appears to make your immune system more ready to attack some invaders when you're actually about to get sick. So it keeps this in mind as well. Okay, so next, why would probiotics actually help to reduce inflammation? So what does it have to do um, with our gut? Um, so as Hippocrates already stated, all disease begins in the gut. And the same is true for inflammation in many cases. So our, actually 70% of our immune system is somehow associated with our gut. And there's a very strong communication between our uh, gut microbiome with our immune system. And we will come back to this in a second. But let's maybe first clarify what are probiotics. The term is often misused uh, in my opinion. So probiotics are by definition beneficial living organisms that have been shown to have health uh, benefits based on scientific studies. Um, usually when we talk about probiotics we talk about lactobacilli or bifidobacteria species as they have been um, mostly studied in scientific literature. Um, or maybe also Streptococcus thermophilus, which is usually fine in yogurt. Um, there are many more microbes that probably will in the near future count as probiotics, but we're not yet there. Um, then when I'm talking about probiotics, personally, I don't imagine a pill. I don't imagine everyone should uh, take a pill in the morning that contains that many probiotics and you're good. I personally prefer getting probiotic food, so fermented food, um, which is rich usually in a big variety of uh, beneficial microbes, including some microbes that have not been yet classified as probiotics. Okay, so having uh, clarified this, why would probiotics prevent inflammation? So there are basically three main mechanisms I find on how probiotics can reduce inflammation. So the first one would be that probiotics have been shown to inhibit pathogens. What are pathogens? Pathogens are basically all kinds of harmful microbes. Um, so if you think of pathogens in relation to your gut, you probably think of salmonella. So you eat something that is bad and you have terrible diarrhea for a week and you feel shitty. Um, but that, that's certainly a pathogen and studies have shown that probiotics can actually prevent or reduce the severity of uh, salmonella infections. But that's not all. So pathogens can also be simply microbes that already live in your gut and that's fine as long as they live there in low numbers, in small numbers. Um, but if they overgrow, they might cause some inflammation. And um, I actually found a really nice figure that perfectly illustrates how probiotics reduce inflammation. So there are basically four mechanisms in this figure. The first one is that probiotics can reduce the pH of the gut lumen, so it makes it more acidic, which makes it extremely hard for pathogens to thrive. 
then probiotics or beneficial microbes, generally speaking, um, also compete for nutrients with pathogens. And what is really cool is that um, beneficial microbes can produce antimicrobial substances that inhibit the growth of pathogens. So think of basically antibiotics produced by bacteria themselves that only target harmful species. And the last thing on how probiotics can do it is by um, talking to our immune system. But we will come back to this in a second. Okay, there was the first mechanism on how probiotics can reduce inflammation by inhibiting the growth of actually harmful species that would cause inflammation. Then the second mechanism on how probiotics may reduce inflammation would be that they prevent gut permeability. So what does it mean? So usually your gut cell wall is co uh, consists of a very tight layer of cells that only allows passage of small nutrients or vitamins, for instance. And um, when this cell wall becomes more permeable, you might call it leaky or also leaky gut, um, when this cell wall becomes more permeable, um, bigger molecules can pass through and often uh, harmful substances uh, pass through, if not even uh, whole bacteria itself. There's some evidence for this as well. And a good example here would be um, the lipopolysaccharide molecule. This is a molecule that is usually found on the cell wall of gram-negative bacteria, so of bacteria that normally populate our gut, but it is very, very inflammatory. So we personally use it in the lab if we want to induce an inflammatory reaction in our immune cells. And many studies have also just used LPS to generate all kinds of diseases in mice. So if you inject mice with LPS, um, depending on what the mice are most susceptible to, they develop all kinds of diseases ranging from, again, heart diseases, inflammatory diseases, uh, but also Alzheimer's or even depression. So it's amazing what this molecule can do. But this it really illustrates how important it is to uh, have not a leaky gut. So to not allow this um, inflammatory molecule to pass through our gut cell wall, where it then interacts with our immune system and stimulates inflammation. Um, by the way, there was also a very interesting study recently that found that people with depression appear to have a leaky gut based on um, different measurements and they also found that those people have higher concentrations of LPS in their blood, so indicating that the LPS pass through the gut cell wall. Okay, the last mechanism on how probiotics may reduce inflammation is via a crosstalk with our immune system. So they are in a concerned communication basically with our immune system. Our immune system sometimes samples microbes from the gut um, and if they recognize them as commensals or as beneficial or at least not harmful bacteria, um, there's no inflammation and the immune system stays calm. But the, uh, our microbes can also more or less directly signal our immune system to stay calm and to kind of tell everything is okay. And they do it by a molecule that is called butyrate. What is butyrate? Butyrate is a short chain fatty acid that is produced by the fermentation of fiber in our gut. Butyrate is not only important for communication with our immune system, but it also provides about 70 to uh, yeah, about 70 percent of the energy requirement of the cells lining the gut. So it's a very important nutrient source as well. But let's focus on the role of butyrate in inflammation for a second. So butyrate has been shown to stimulate regulatory T cells. You can view regulatory T cells as the guardians of our immune system. So what they do is basically they dampen inflammation and they also help to clear inflammation. So to calm down your immune system once the threat is gone. Um, there has been some engineered mice who lack T regulatory T cells or short T-Rex cells and these mice develop all kinds of autoimmune disease immediately. And even though this autoimmune disease development can be stopped if the T-Rex cells uh, were introduced later again. So this some, some, uh, clearly illustrates the importance of 
regulatory T cells. So butyrate is clearly an important signal produced by our microbiome to tell our immune system that everything is okay. But to be fair, most probiotics or most micros we think to be probiotics or are available in probiotic capsules actually don't produce butyrate. So bifidobacteria and lactobacilli have so far not been shown to produce butyrate. But, and that's a cool thing, countless studies have now shown that um, adding these bacteria, these probiotic bacteria to the gut somehow increases butyrate production naturally in the gut. The mechanism is not completely clear here, but it's probably because they, um, on the one hand, inhibit the growth of pathogens, and on the other hand, they interact with other beneficial bacteria, so there's a whole community there, and therefore those butyrate-producing bacteria um, thrive and can produce more of this super anti-inflammatory agent. Okay, one of my favorite studies that illustrates the power of probiotics and reducing inflammation was published in 2014. And for that study, the researchers simply gave a probiotic supplement to patients with rheumatoid arthritis, so an inflammatory disease that affects the joints. And at the end of the study, the researchers checked for inflammatory markers in the blood. And what they found was really impressive. So for the probiotic group, all inflammatory proteins or inflammatory cytokines went down compared to the placebo where all went further up. And the one anti-inflammatory cytokine they measured went actually up for the probiotic group. So this anti-inflammatory cytokine is interleukin-10 or IL-10 and it is produced by regulatory T cells. So showing again that even probiotics don't produce butyrate directly, they somehow have the ability to increase um, or to stimulate regulatory T cells and thereby increase the concentration of anti-inflammatory cytokines. Okay, I have a whole list with more studies uh, done on mice and human as a link in the description. You can check out yourself if you like. Also, if you enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful in general, I would uh, appreciate if you like this video because the YouTube algorithm likes it if you do it. Consider subscribing if you haven't done it. Um, thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time.